new videos every day. Someone left a comment on one of my videos saying that pornography saves marriages. But in 2003, the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers had a conference. And at that conference, more than two thirds of those 350 divorce lawyers actually agreed that the internet was playing an increasing role in matrimonial splits. And they cited excessive online porn watching as contributing to almost 50% of the divorce so is porn really saving marriages or is it ruining marriages and how would your girlfriend really respond if she knew what kind of porn you were watching a hedonist believes that the sole purpose of a person's existence is to experience pleasure and fulfill one's desires but a stoic believes that the desire for pleasure clouds our judgment alienates us from reason, and destroys our inner calm. So which one is right? While I don't think any of us would want to live a life completely devoid of pleasure, is the pursuit of pleasure really the only reason for living? Does the pursuit of pleasure cloud our judgment? Can you think of any examples of people doing pretty stupid things just to experience a little bit of pleasure? Buddhists believe that the desire for pleasure is in itself a primary cause of human suffering. While a utilitarianist would believe that pleasure is the reward for leading an ethical and productive life. So who is right? Is pleasure good or is pleasure bad? Do the small moments of pleasure we experience in life add up to true happiness? Or do people who crave excessive pleasure end up suffering in the end? Certainly a whole host of rules, morals, and laws have arisen out of the question of pleasurable activities. For example, many religions have sought to suppress sexual pleasure and limit sexual activity. In some cases, they even go so far as to require complete celibacy of both the practitioners and the parishioners. But if sex feels so good, then why do so many religions go out of their way to make sex seem evil? And it's not just religion that has a problem with pleasure. Government also seeks to limit certain pleasure-seeking activities. For example, it's illegal to engage in recreational drug use, prostitution, and gambling. But does the government really have a right to tell us which pleasure-seeking activities we can engage in and which ones we can't? Should a person have the right to do recreational drugs? I mean, who owns our bodies, us or the government? And it's not just governments, it's also business, where most businesses will have rules limiting certain recreational activities. They may require mandatory drug testing or they may forbid you from having sexual relations with another employee. But are our personal lives really any business of business? I mean, should an, our employer really have any say over what we do in our personal time outside of work hours? And then there's the issue of consequences, because what feels really great in the short term might have really horrible effects in the long term. Let's take crystal meth for an example. When you are high on meth, you feel on top of the world, you feel completely invincible, but as we've seen in the before and after pictures of meth users, the actuality is your teeth begin to rot or may completely fall out, you age prematurely, and before long you look like a zombie in The Walking Dead. So is that intense meth high really worth all the suffering? The premature death or a long prison sentence? And sex certainly feels great in the short term, but there are plenty of potential consequences that come from an overindulgence in sex as well. Things like sexually transmitted diseases, unwanted pregnancies, or even infidelity, divorce, jealousy, broken relationships, broken homes. You get the idea. It's estimated that one in five people have herpes, so this is a great Example, because while they were having sex, I'm sure the sex felt really, really great. But the herpes, not so much. And there are 1.37 million abortions that take place every year in America. And that's a lot of abortions considering that only 76 million women are of childbearing age. And don't get me wrong, I am pro-choice, but with 1.37 million abortions, doesn't it kind of seem like abortion is becoming a popular form of birth control? 
Is it okay if abortion is considered another form of birth control? Simply because condoms make sex less pleasurable and birth control pills are hard to manage? Partying and drinking alcohol can also be another form of pleasure, but again with a long list of potential consequences. Overindulging can lead to liver damage, addiction, weight gain, and not to mention legal troubles like DWIs, public intoxication, and car accidents. Alcohol abuse kills more than 64,000 Americans every year, so I guess some people really can party so hard that it kills them. What about you? What's your experience with alcohol? Do you feel that your life has been improved because of the times you consume alcohol? Or has alcohol made your life more difficult? And what about video games? Video games are fun, right? But what have video games done for kids grades in school, not just college, but grade school before that, and even after that, to adults, to marriages. What have video games done for your social life? Do you find that you're more social because of them or less social because of them? Have a Coke and a smile. Coca-Cola, happiness. A lot of people love to indulge in a soda and with the caffeine rush and the sugar buzz, it's pretty easy to see why. But in a country that spends $60 billion a year on soda alone, we can see that maybe that momentary happiness is coming at a high expense. Not to mention, soda has also been leaked to obesity and diabetes and a whole wealth of other health issues. So is that momentary happiness really worth it? Why is it that so many really pleasurable things have such negative consequences? In this video, I'm asking you, you tell me, is there such thing as too much pleasure? And if so, how much is too much? Is there a difference between true happiness and seeking pleasure? And if so, what is it? You tell me. Is porn really 100% fantasy? Or is there a little bit of reality in there? Just the slightest chance that you really could pull some of that off. In a future video, we're going to discuss pornography. The World Health Organization has estimated that America has nearly 25% of its Americans on mental health treatment of some kind. Is it possible that 25% of Americans are really crazy? Or are we just the most likely ones to buy their drugs? In a future video, we're gonna talk about medicalizing the normal conditions and how they are making more money off of you. If you haven't already given me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate you doing so. And if you would like to see a video about what happiness has to do with the accumulation of stuff, you should check out my video right up here. And if you've ever wondered what happiness has to do with body image, you can check out my video, Happiness and Boob Jobs. And if you'd like to hear an explanation of Maslow's hierarchy of human needs and what humans really need in order to be happy, you can check that one out down here. And if you're one of those haters who's always leaving me rude, crude, and inappropriate comments, I've got one thing for you.